getting lost in deep woods while camping, hiking or exploring can sometimes lead you to an unknown place. A place where another world of cryptids, myths and dark stories haunts the young traveler. So before I start I want to wish you all good night, because tonight we are going to narrate about scary deep woods horror stories. And as always, do smash that like button, subscribe and hit notification bell. It really helps with YouTube algorithm and in the growth of this channel. And now, story time! So I live in the city, but I'd call myself quite an accomplished outdoorsman when I can get away from the city life. A few years ago, I loaded a bunch of camping gear onto my bicycle and spent the better part of the next seven months riding 5,300 miles, 8,500 kilometers, around the US. At night, I most often preferred to wild camp, simply finding somewhere to disappear into the woods, somewhere people were unlikely to find me and even less likely to care that I was there. It ended up being one of my favorite parts of the whole trip, just finding some secluded spot in the woods to get some much needed rest. But the forest, I quickly learned, is not a quiet place at night. There's always some form of noise. The chirping of thousands of crickets becomes a constant drone throughout the night, accompanied by many toads. There would always be at least a slight breeze through the trees, or the babbling of a nearby creek. It was always a highlight of my nights though not particularly uncommon to hear the distant yips and howls of coyotes, and I fondly look back on the one night where two owls, one on either end of my tent, called back and forth through much of the night. After a month or so of this, I became quite accustomed to the nighttime sounds of the forest, and it became very comforting. So it was quite a shock to my system when one night in rural Montana, I realized I was struggling to sleep because of the exact opposite of what keeps most people up. That night, it wasn't the noise that was keeping me awake but rather the complete lack of any noise. It was dead silent. And that was an incredibly unnerving experience. I can only describe it as the loudest silence I've ever heard. It almost felt as if the entire forest was hiding from an equally silent predator. Suddenly the occasional snapping of a twig a common sound that would normally get lost in the cacophony of the forest, sounded like a gunshot. I slept terribly that night, and morning could not come soon enough. My grandparents live in a very rural part of Romania. So rural we didn't get flushing toilets till like, 2007. My parents were born there and I was raised as a child there so I English isn't my first language. Sorry for any mistakes. My family isn't very superstitious, we rely on more common sense more than anything. So when I would go out to see my friends in the village I would be told to try not to come home too late. There are a lot of dangerous dogs around. I pride myself on not being afraid of normal or day-to-day -day things example a dog, so I would kind of just just wave those warnings off. Summer of 2017. I was 16 years old and visiting my grandparents for the summer. It was a very hot day and everyone stayed out later in the village park than usual, maybe till around 2 am. The way back home is either I could use the main road and go down my pathway home or cut across the school's grounds and shave 2 minutes of my walk home. Getting there in 7 minutes instead of a whopping 9. I used the shortcut. In the summer the school grounds can sometimes be used to store lumber piles. Obviously. There's no one there to use the school, why not make the most of it? Well, that summer, the neighbors facing the school were building slash fixing something. I think they're barb. So there were several large piles of wood, creating a weird zigzag enclosure thing, sorry I can't explain it any better. Anyways, in the daytime it's no problem finding your way out. But in a village in Romania where not all the streetlights are working, and no tall buildings illuminating the area, it's like being a mouse in a maze, but you're also blind. I was midway, trying to figure out whether I should just hop the school fence, if I could find it, 
or try to work out how to cut through the piles to get on the green to go home. I don't know how else to describe it, but suddenly everything got very, very still. There wasn't a breeze. Usually there's crickets, frogs, dogs barking, etc. Everything went quiet. My hair started going up on end. It just felt wrong. There was a huge urge to turn around. I did. In the path I took across the school grounds was the biggest town I'd ever seen. It was the size of a small pony. It looked unnatural. It was a light color with darker snout and paws. I didn't even hear it coming. I should have. All of our village dogs are loud, small to mid-size, and dumb as rocks. They bark at anything. But this thing just didn't. I started sweating really bad and I got that ball of fear in your stomach that you get. It wasn't moving. Just staring straight at me. What did I do? I turned around, clenched my butt cheeks, and walked home. Granted, it was an extremely uncomfortable walk home but I did it and I survived. I asked my grandmother about it the next day. She got a very worried look and said she had no idea. Our shepherds don't use huge dogs anymore and they're usually chained to the ground. I don't take that pathway home anymore. I grew up on a large farm. 100 acres of farmland and additional 40 of woods. When I turned 17, I decided I was going to join the military the day after graduation but, I wanted to be prepared. So, I started getting up at 4.30 in the morning and running the perimeter of the property. I did this every day from June through mid-October and I was getting lean and strong and ready. I was getting to the point that I felt like I could do the run twice without exhaustion. October 17th all that changed. I started my run at 4.30 like normal. I got to the rear corner of the lot, literally the furthest point from home on my run and I turned the corner and my right foot came down in a dugout hole. I felt my ankle break and my hip popped in a weird way that makes me want to vomit just thinking about. I collapsed in a heap falling on something sharp that cut straight through my sweatpants and into my leg and my orbital bone hitting a rock knocking me out. I woke up some time later. The only thing I can tell you is that it was still dark. I did a self-inventory, physically touching all my injuries hip, ankle, cut leg, smashed face. My vision in my right eye was blurry but still good. I quickly assessed that standing wasn't an option. Waiting for someone wasn't an option either because, for reasons, I had never told my parents what I was doing. The only option I had was to crawl. So crawl I did. It was easily 100 yards of crawl through hard frozen, uneven fields with the remaining stalks of, I want to say but I'm not sure, corn after harvest. Ever inch was excruciating. I was about halfway through the crawl when I saw the coyotes. First one. Then two. They kept a good distance but were clearly curious. I remembered what my grandpa said about wild animals. They don't want to fight. They just want dinner. I couldn't be big so I decided to be noisy. Every pull forward I would growl loudly and this kept them at bay. By the time I got to the driveway, it was fully light. I saw my parents' car was gone. They hadn't even realized I didn't get up and leave for school. I crawled the rest of the way to the house. Somehow got the door open. Crawled into the kitchen. Used the broom to knock the phone down and called 911. I woke up at least a day later in the hospital. My ankle was held together with a metal plate and screws. My hip had to be surgically placed back in the socket. My face was black and blue and I have a permanent crease where the stone hit my orbital bone. And my hopes of escaping to the military were gone. Driving down a bum nowhere hill road commonly called the shortcut to the locals. Called that because it went straight up a massive set of hills and straight down, it was carved and made by local people to avoid having to go all the way around which was a solid extra 30 minutes depending on construction, logging, 
the local gravel slash soil company, etc. Well, this route is about 10 minutes long if you're going the average 50 miles per hour that people usually did, but I felt weird about the road that night. It was about 1 p.m., I was heading home from a long trip I spent with some friends, and I was alone. It didn't feel right, I hadn't taken the route much prior to that, but I was tired and didn't want to waste time getting home. So I'm driving down the road at about 30 miles per hour, and I notice a slight orange slash bronze haze coming just above the nearby trees on my left. I figured it was a car, but the road curved to the right at that place and went straight from there so there couldn't be any headlights coming from that direction. I slowed down, thinking maybe someone had gone off the road, but I couldn't see the origin of the lights. Deciding best not to be the curious stupid person in budget horror movies who checks something out alone, I just pulled my handgun from my holster and set it on the center console, just in case. I slowed to a stop as I came up to the curve so I wouldn't move away from the lights. That's when I found out the lights were moving. Ever so slightly at first, then gained some speed, kind of diagonally towards me but would have passed me. That's when I saw it peek through the trees. It's hard to describe outside of miniature electrical sun. The best representation I've seen is the electrical anomaly in Metro 2033, imagine that but orange and more fury slash plasma why than electrical. It moved through the trees, and I noticed it would sort of stick an arm out to touch the trees it passed, like a little lightning arm. It would start a little fire whenever it touched something. But seeing as these were all giant live pines and it was a rather wet area, valley between two hills, and fires don't start on live wood easily, the fires would go out pretty quick on their own. Then it struck some dead birch trees. And oh boy did those light up quick. This seemed to give it more energy and it sped up and avoided a couple more trees before smacking straight into a big great oak. It blew up like a grenade and disappeared and set that side of the oak on fire. I called the fire department because that shit wasn't going out anytime soon. Fast forward a bit, they put it out relatively easily, it hadn't grown much and they had one of those big off-road brush fire trucks. Police came and questioned me, they thought I started the fire, that I committed arson. Mid-question a dude from the FD rolls up and says there's lightning scarring on some of the trees and in the dirt, and that it wasn't arson and the fire followed a specific path that didn't include a lot of dry stuff. After a confusing hour of back and forth, they chalked it down to a destructive event of ball lightning. That remains my only experience with it, and I'm glad I haven't seen it since, that shit is scary. Behind my house was miles of woods until they chopped it down for a neighborhood. 20 feet behind my house is a steep drop off or a mild cliff into a valley with a creek in it. Very steep on both sides. So this valley has been left as forest in between neighborhoods. When I was little we saw all kinds of wildlife in our yard we stopped seeing turkeys completely and less deer after the new neighborhood. Tons of rabies too until the bigger animals stopped coming around. This is all backstory. I only let one dog out to pee in the backyard on a leash because she can escape anything given time while the other is chained to a runner that runs the length of the yard but she is a good girl and doesn't need supervision. So at night it has always been creepy to walk out to the edge of the woods just so the dog can pee. Last summer my sister and I kept hearing something over the hill and felt like we were being watched. The motion sensor light in our yard was always on by the time went outside too. We both thought we were being paranoid so we didn't tell the other our thoughts. Eventually I broke Dosen and told her we were being watched from over the hill and she said she FSLT the same way. We both agreed the presence felt negative and angry. We started taking the dogs out with bats and knives and pepper spray. We could not figure out what was watching us. Whatever it was got bolder and bolder. We started to hear it more frequently. By the way it sounded we both estimated its size as at least that of a large dog. Sometimes we heard a grunt or two. This only happened at night. The dogs would silently whip their heads towards the sounds and just watch. Normally they bark at that kind of stuff. 
I was glad though because one dog is 12 and needs a leg brace to walk while the escaping one is a chihuahua mix so if they started a fight they would lose. This went on for weeks. It started that we felt like we were being watched in the daytime too. We even started hear sounds at day. We never once thought this presence felt human. There are coyotes in the area. There are bears too but they are so rare they make the news when sighted. Mountain lions are extinct in my area so it was possible that some found their way back to this territory but it was unlikely. One day I am letting the dogs out but I am not too on guard as daytime visits were still much rarer. Then I hear a large object moving through the brush and a grunt. My stomach drops, that was the closest I ever heard it. I pick up my dog as slowly as possible and start to turn towards the house to evacuate when I catch sight of a herd of five or six deer on the cliff staring me down. They look downright murderous. I have seen deer my whole life but I never saw one look so angry. It had been in the news a year before that a single deer killed someone nearby, they were dumb and didn't respect the deer's space. My house was stalked by a herd of deer for weeks lol. My family throws expired produce out of the back door over the cliff, the yard is shallow and you can make the throw from inside, to avoid compostable material sitting in a landfill. That's why the deer were hanging out, we had a buffet for them. We stopped that real quick and they only hung around for a few more days. It might sound dumb that we never put this behavior together with the visitor but we had done that our whole lives and forgot about it the moment it was launched over the hill. The end result was pretty funny but the build up was creepy. I used to live in rural Tennessee for a minute. I had a house that was at the end of a two mile long driveway, and my closest neighbor was halfway down said driveway. We weren't close, but we helped each other out here and there when needed. One night, I heard someone driving up the driveway. It was probably 11 PM or so, and nobody lived past me, and I had zero clue who it was. I walked over to my front windows and looked outside. Some dude in an SUV was parked in front of my porch. He sees me in the window, waves, then gets out and comes up to talk to me. I opened my front door, locked the screen, and asked what he needed. Said something about looking for his dog, so I asked who he was and where he lived. This dude looked me in the face and said oh I live just past you, there and pointed to the densely packed trees that surrounded my house told him I hadn't seen his dog, and that I apologized for it. He said okay whatever. His tracker just led me here so I figured you would have seen him. I had not, in fact, seen his dog that apparently had a tracker on it. He turned around and walked back down. I watched him until he got into his car and drove far enough that I couldn't hear his tires anymore. Next day, neighbors came over to collect trash for me, they owned a dump truck and saved me the 40 minute drive to town a lot, and they asked me if I had some dude come to my property last night. Said yeah, they asked if I knew him. Said no. Apparently this dude told my neighbors that he lived at the top of this hill across town. Only thing is, said hill had one house, and it was destroyed by a tornado four years prior. He used the same excuse about his dog, but said it was in their yard. Neighbor had no clue how they got into their yard because they, similarly to me, had a gated yard. I never usually shut mine because it got stuck when you latched it, but my neighbors always had theirs latched along with a no trespassing or I'll shoot sign. Needless to say, I kept my gate latched and bought a master lock for it after. Moved about four months after that. When I grew up, I lived in a neighborhood that had a giant cemetery across from it, and I spent many, many nights drinking and smoking weed in the graveyard. Since this cemetery hadn't had anyone buried in it in over 50 years, no one ever visited and city maintained it. One night I'm doing my normal thing, drinking, smoking, and playing on my phone, and I hear someone say do you like hanging out with a dead young man? 
and I'd turn around and see a 60-something black man wearing jeans, a checkered flannel shirt, and a gold cross necklace. And I'd tell him yeah I do actually, they don't talk much. He says you'd be surprised how often they do, and he asks my name. I tell him and ask him his and he says I'm Pastor Troy, my wife is buried here and I'd like to see her. I ask if he'd like his privacy and he said I'm actually leaving, you have a good night young man. And he walks away. When I went home and told my mom that I met a guy named Pastor Troy she looked at me really strange and said are you sure? Pastor Troy died a couple years before you were born son. She asked me what he looked like and after I described him she said that I was really freaking her out because I described the man she knew was dead perfectly. It freaked me out for a while. I was driving home not so long ago from work in the pitch black and my usual route was blocked by a cop car so I turned around and went down a country lane no street lights. I'd crawled out of work so needed to pee but it's only 25 minutes to home it'll be fine. Driving 10 miles an hour down this lane I'd never driven down, ditches either side of a lane through a field straight out of a horror film when my neck starts prickling. Something's watching me and it's close. I ignored it cause I'm 37 and really brave, until I couldn't ignore it anymore, looked out the window into the eyes of the devil that opened its mouth and made a god awful noise. I screamed, nearly wet myself and then realized it was a field full of bloody sheep. Another time in bed around midnight, I heard something rustling around my garden, I lived in a bungalow at the time, so I looked out the window thinking the rabbit had let herself out the hutch until she started thumping at something that had disturbed her. Couldn't see anything for a start then two bright yellow eyes and jaws of death opened at me. I fell off the bed squealing and actually did pee a little that time. It turned out to be one of my jet black cats that had snuck out when I'd gone for my bedtime sick. She wanted to come back in. Animals will be the death of me. Was driving down a windy country road around 4 AM in the middle of nowhere to my favorite hunting spot. A bit groggy. As my buddy and I come around the next bend we notice a large bright light in the distance. As we get closer, we notice that it is a large fire and that someone must be burning wood. We continue driving and begin to slow down as we get closer. As we approach we see two people waving us down in the middle of the street. We roll down our windows to hear blood curdling screams and cries for help. We look over and can see the fire clearly now. An old pickup truck had ran off the road and smashed into a tree. The entire cab was engulfed in 12 foot high flames. One of the bystanders screamed there's someone in there. I could see the silhouette of a person in the driver's seat surrounded by smoke and fire being burned alive. The flames were too large to offer any help to the person. To this day the haunting images are burned into my mind and the sound of the cries for help are something I will never forget. By far the scariest thing I have ever witnessed. Rural Ohio. Went to visit a buddy, D, who moved a couple hours away to another shithole town. Had another buddy, B, go with me. D takes B and I to meet a new friend of his. We'll get to his designation in a minute. Dude opens the door, greets us, seems normal for like five seconds. He was shirtless, but that's pretty common out here. Then the dude turns around as he waves us in. Massive swastika tattoo across his entire back, colored in with confederate flag colors and patterns. It was at this moment, B and I locked eyes and we knew what each other was thinking. Our lives might be in danger. So, we follow this Nazi, there it is, through the house, don't want to be rude. We noticed that the carpet was supposed to be white but it was more of a brown with a slight red tint to it. Place was a bit of a mess. We walked past his bathroom where his 14 year old younger sister, we were all 19, was taking a shit with the door open and attempted to greet us mid shit. At this point B and I were massively uncomfortable and a little creeped out by everything and everyone beneath this roof. 
Finally we get to the dude's room and it was then when B and I looked at each other, we were both sweating profusely, fear in our eyes. Guns man. Everywhere. Had to have been at least 30 guns all over his room, stored improperly, noticed a couple with the safeties off. Porn posters all over his walls, and of course some Nazi memorabilia. B called my cell from his pocket, to which I answered pretending it was my sister and I acted as if a family emergency was happening and pretended to be distressed. Said, I was sorry but we needed to get back to town. We agreed to never ever visit D ever again. I don't know if this constitutes as creepy or horrifying but to me it started off creepy and got horrifying later on. I have a lot of creepy stories in the woods off Spain's and near my granddad village, some normal, some paranormal, as the thread is serious I will stick to the normal ones. After a day of hiking I started returning home, almost dark but we have a clear path marked with stones that reflect light as markers, halfway there the foxes had no better thing to do that starting to mate so the woods were covered in what hears like women being murdered. Suddenly everything became quiet which normally indicates that wolves or bears are hunting. I stoke to drink a bit as they tend to avoid peel and even if they see you they don't care most of the time. When suddenly I notice the breath of something almost touching my neck, I was so scared only thinking that I was stupid and I just found the only man eating bear in the country. I slowing turn to see it and stop sewing my back and there I see it, a big adult bear sniffing at me. Thankfully once it stopped sniffing it went back into the dense woods. It was scary as f, I was probably safe as in swimming with sharks, but the creepiest thing is how a 200 kilo being sneaked on me with that ease. We own about 9 acres and the shape is a little odd. It's kind of long and slanty with a ravine and creek in the middle. The house is at the front half and the pastures are at the back. So there's a dirt slash clay slash gravel road through the dense forest, down the ravine, over the creek, and back up to where the horses are. I usually walk, because the more I drive on the road the more maintenance it needs and I'm sort of lazy. The first creepy experience was when I was walking down to feed the horses and it was getting close to dusk. I was by myself, but the forest was pretty quiet and peaceful. I sneezed and in a thicket to my left something made a similar noise, but it was not human. It was a deeper pitched, snortier sneeze sound. I didn't like that at all at the time, but I assume now I startled a deer or something. The other time I was walking in the same area with my husband, but it was night time. At night it gets super dark being a rural forest, so we had flashlights. As we're walking along and talking we hear the weirdest noise way up in the tops of the tulip poplars above our heads. It sounded like some strange monkey laughing, but deeper and slower than any monkey I've heard. You could also hear the sound of something big jumping from branch to branch. We tried shining the flashlights up there, but we couldn't see that high in the trees. We left pretty quick and have never heard it again. I tell myself that we startled a flock of wild turkeys, but that was definitely the creepiest experience. I'm not from a super rural part of my country, but it's still just villages with a few dozen houses and then like one kilometer stretch of road between them. But I also live on the edge of a big forest. Anyway. Me and my cousin were about 16 to 18 and we were just standing on the road in front of my house. It was like 3 AM, and it was winter. We were just going home from God knows where, and my house was first up, so we usually chatted for a while before I went in. Also important here, we were stone cold sober. Suddenly, there is this weird sound in the distance, which was even weirder since snow usually deadens all sounds. It was like this high-pitched regular beating thing. Kinda like a seagull cry, but regular, like unnaturally regular, like a squeaky car or drill bit. And it started coming closer and closer, but not directly at us. It was getting louder and louder, to the point of being almost uncomfortably loud. 
It sounded like it flew above my house, about 50 meters away from us, and then it started moving away until it just faded out. We couldn't see anything, because while there are street lights there, they are the kind that reduce light pollution, so basically everything behind the light is like a black wall. Now we were pretty freaked out, and I told him he can crash at my place, since he had a 20 minutes walk ahead of him. He didn't want to, but we still stood there and just nervously talked about what it could have been. It could have been a bird, but it's no bird I have ever heard, and it was during pitch black night during the winter. It couldn't have been a seagull, since we don't live anywhere near water, so even river seagulls don't exist here. And it couldn't have been a hawk, since I know how hawks sound like since they nest right above my house. As we are standing there all weirded out, a car rolls up, and a guy comes out. It's a civilian car, and the guy is like mid-40s. Pulls out a badge, apparently he is a detective at the local police station. Wants to see our ID cards, and writes our info down into his notepad, which I noticed had several people on there, but I couldn't make out anything fast enough. He is acting all shady, asking what we are doing there, and if we saw any weird stuff, and we just say no. Because we were kids and we aren't going to go telling a policeman that we heard an alien robot bird. So he leaves after a while, in the direction of the alien robot bird sound, and after another half an hour my cousin was brave enough to go home, and that was it. It's been over a decade since then, but a few months ago we were talking with friends, and we started reminiscing about this night. Turns out we weren't the only ones to hear it. A few friends that live in the general direction it moved towards also claimed to have heard it, and one said he also got his info taken by the police. Apparently it wasn't a single event as well, and that it went on for a period of time that year, and then it stopped. So we still have absolutely no idea what it was, but the whole situation seems really weird. I like to believe it was an alien robot bird though. I live in rural Mississippi and when my sister lived in Oxford I would visit her frequently. There was always a weird back road I would take to skip over the Natchez Trace Parkway, they loved to give out tickets there, and it was genuinely gross. I'm used to roadkill but there's a stretch of about 3 miles where there's so many dead animals, mostly dogs, it made me ill and so sad. I have no idea why there were so 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 many dead dogs. Large dogs too, mostly pit bulls or hunting dogs. I was always careful on that road because I never wanted to hit any of them. Once I was driving and saw what I thought was a big black dog about to cross the road, so I came to an almost complete stop to let him pass safely. But I immediately felt weird because he wasn't just black, he was matte black, like I couldn't see any features or sun shining on him, it was like he was made of a black hole. When he stepped up from the grass onto the road I realized his legs were far too long and skinny for a dog, and so was his neck, and he was just too tall to be a dog, but his head was very dog-like, like a mastiff. He wasn't too far away from my car but he still felt blurry like he was too far away to see, and it was the middle of the day but there wasn't an ounce of light bouncing off of him. He crossed the road with huge strides, like three steps to cross the two-lane road, and disappeared into the woods. I saw it a few times after that as well, on different occasions, but on those occasions it would just appear in the tree line and duck back in. Very weird area. We were off-roading a couple of years up near the Canadian border, followed some power lines for a ways, when we decided to stop and check out a giant bird's nest atop one of the junctions. Heard a noise behind us and noticed a group of ATV riders on the next hill behind us. Not unusual for that area, what was unusual was the guns strapped to their backs, not hunting rifles, machine gun style and they were staring back with binoculars. We jump back in the jeep and start to head back to our family cabin, check back and yes they are following us and trying to catch up. The kid driving just nails it, our cell phones are useless up here, we have no protection, we only have speed on our side. 
We sped down dirt roads that have never been maintained and somehow managed to get the Jeep parked far enough in our driveway and pull enough brush in front to cover it and hit ourselves. When they roared past we noticed they were all dressed in green, covered in weird insignia patches that we didn't recognize and carrying guns like they were ready for some intense combat, no idea what they were doing or training for. I used to live on 15 acres in the country with my husband and children. We lived at the end of a private gravel road and had a long, winding, gravel driveway. Around 10 PM I'm getting ready for bed and I hear a car coming down the road. I go get my husband and we both start listening. It sounds like the car stopped, but we start to hear the gravel crunching. Someone is walking up our driveway. We are not expecting anyone and certainly not on foot. At this point we head into the garage and since it's pitch black outside, we can't see shit. My husband calls out to the person, but they don't respond. The crunching noise is getting louder as the person gets closer. My husband calls out again and still no response. Just the sound of boots on the rocks. I find our big spotlight and my husband shines it down the driveway. Finally the man rounds the corner and comes into view. It was an UPS man delivering a package. My friend and I were driving across a rural stretch of highway with very little traffic at night. We were having an involved conversation while he drove. Suddenly I saw something extremely large looming in the distance, right in the middle of the road. It too dark to make out but looked like a huge boulder or round object, at least 10 feet high and just as wide. I screamed and pointed at it, my friend hit the brakes and swerved hard around, thankfully missing it. No other cars were around and as it was a one way, we could not turn around to investigate. My first thought was a giant boulder but we were in flat desert, nowhere near a mountain or hills. We called the cops to let them know but about shit our pants. I'm from New Hampshire so fairly used to wilderness, I went to Canada just north of Minnesota to camp and hike with some friends. However, one of my friends became very sick. Not sure why but I decided I would stay behind for the one to two days it would take them to bring him to get cared for. After they left I pretty quickly began to get a little uneasy and had this odd feeling as it got dark, hard to explain but I felt very uneasy, I chalked it up to the weird weather and odd silence of the day, it was very humid and everything felt still, and it was cloudy so it got dark quickly. Anyway, I started a fire and am used to being on my own so once it got dark I felt fine. It was pretty late by the time I decided to head into the tent, now, One thing about tents is you can hear everything. And I heard what sounded like footsteps, maybe like 40 to 50 feet away. I assumed it was a bear looking for scraps and it would move on. I had nothing in the tent and am not particularly scared of bears. I continued to hear footsteps and it soon became clear that uh, there was more than one thing and B. It definitely wasn't a bear. Bears tend to breathe loudly and sniff and make a lot of noise. This was a sneaky sound that would wander and come back, each time making the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I cracked the tent and looked out but it was so dark, eventually I was like F it and grabbed the .45 and a flashlight and opened the tent door and lit the place up with light to find like eight huge grey wolves staring at me. And that was just what I could see, three right in front of me and at least four to five pairs of eyes further out. Again. I'm not particularly scared of wolves either, but I was alone, had nowhere for protection like a car or trailer, and was in literally the middle of nowhere. It also wasn't that late maybe like 1.30 am. So it wasn't going to get light out for at least 2 hours. I just stood there and looked at them to see what their body language told me. And it looked like they were on the hunt. If I didn't have my gun I have no idea what I would have done. Even then if they wanted me dead my gun would have done little. I always thought that wolves were the size of like big dogs or huskies but they are anatomically built different, like way bigger. One of them would have murked me let alone all of them. 
I just curled up in my sleeping bag with my .45 and all the magazines I had, put my buck knife on my ankle and sat wide awake until the sun came up. Then I started a fire and went about business as usual. I will never camp alone, I suggest all y'all do the same. I'm from Australia and have never heard a sound like that made by a puma or cougar, whatever is native to the area of McCall, Idaho. I was there visiting a friend's family and was invited to help scoot some deer out of some crops around 1 am on a beautiful moonlit night when this incredibly distressing scream just shredded the calm. Imagine the sound of a woman being tortured to death and this is what I was trying to process before anyone told me what it was. It was the single most unnerving experience of my life and still gives me the creeps even as I type this. Nothing could convince me that the sound I was enduring wasn't anything but an unfortunate human suffering unspeakable pain. When I was told we were leaving because there was a cougar slash puma in the immediate area, I was first one on the back of that pickup FFS. I won't lie, I did not sleep a wink that night because I could still hear it moaning slash screaming on for at least another hour. I know the family were pretty amused by my reaction but to put things in context we had been for a walk that morning and they showed me some bear claw marks on a tree. About 15 feet up a tree. So if anything had primed me to be shit scared of things that can slash will kill you in North America, that was it and that night in the fields was the creepiest and most disturbing experience I've ever had. For context, I am from Missouri, specifically a more rural area of smaller towns about 45 to 50 minutes from St. Louis. Anyway, my grandfather owned a property that he originally used for hunting and camping somewhere in the Mark Twain National Forest, about an hour and a half or so away. When my grandfather was alive he would often take me down here for camping trips and such. I was a child at the time. One particular trip me and my grandfather had arrived by our lonesome and planned to stay one night and the rest of my family was going to come down the next day. By the time we got to the property, it was late in the evening so all we did was set up in tent and go to sleep. A bit of time later after settling down, I found myself waking up in the middle of the night. Now our tent was stationed directly across from the ruins of the old hunting cabin that my grandfather had built, it had burnt down some years before this. I woke up with a strange eerie feeling like something was watching me, then from the slightly open flap in the tent, I saw a pair of what appeared to be glowing yellow eyes staring at me from the ruins of the cabin. I woke my grandfather up, but he ignored me and told me to go to sleep. I kept staring at these apparent eyes for what seemed like hours until I finally passed out. I awoke the next morning and looking around the area of the cabin, but saw nothing that could reflect light or anything like that, I only saw a large pair of paw prints in the ash of the cabin. I was once in a farm, sleeping in this camping tent with my best friend. He wakes me up and goes bro I have to pee, but we were far from the house, like mid forest. I say just pee on the grass or whatever and he answers look at the fire pit, we'd made one before gone sleeping. I look and there are two gigantic creepy shadows being projected on the tent. We panic, but we calm each other to sleep. An hour or so later he wakes me up again and he's crying, saying bro I'm gonna die I can't hold my pee. The shadows are still out there, they're like 7 feet tall, maybe my 12 year old mind exaggerated that. We cry ourselves to sleep again but he's almost pissing himself. 20 minutes later we're awake again because he obviously couldn't hold it. The shadows are gone. We get out of the tent and he wants to go to the house to pee. It's a mile away but he'd already pissed his pants a little so that gave us a little more time. We walk through this forest with a souvenir flashlight for minutes, just years later I realize how stupid and lucky we were, there were like 6 snakes per inch there, but we made it to the house. We are getting close when we look the opposite way, there's a soccer field and there they were, 
the same two giant scary shadows wandering around at 3 am, why not? We sprint full speed to the house, enter the bathroom together and start panicking again. He can't hold the pee, I just turn around and he pees as quiet as possible. He gets up, we hug, he didn't wash his hands to be quiet, pretty gross now I see, and try not to cry but we hear footsteps out the house. The door knocks. We are shivering but quiet. Not a single word or sound. Who's in there? Says the voice out the door. We hear a key, it's turning the lock, it unlocks the door. We are crying, hugging as hard as we can, praying, and the door opens. It's the house's owner, his uncle, we were so panicked we forgot he was there. We tell him everything, we cry, we stutter and sob, but we ask him to go outside. He sighs and says fine. When he opened the door we got in shock cause he looked surprised. The surprise expression slowly turns into laughing face as he was realizing something, it was really creepy. We ask what's up. He goes the horses broke the fence and escaped. We go with him, take a look and there were two horses in front of the house. They were his uncles. We laugh nervously and sleep in the house. Biggest oof in my life. I lived in a really small town with nothing to do, but there was a bicycling slash walking trail that the state had set up on an old railway. In total I think the trail was about 40 miles long, but my friends and I would occasionally walk out 2-3 to three miles to enjoy nature or explore, whatever. One day when I was around 10-11 to 11, a friend and I, both girls, were walking the trail and we heard a weird banging noise. We also thought we heard a kid crying but it sounded more muffled than the banging noise. Curious and concerned, we quietly went to the edge to investigate while staying hidden in the trees and bushes. We saw a man with no shirt swinging a bat against a crate, occasionally letting out a loud scream as he attacked the box. For a few minutes my friend and I were just watching and trying to make sense of what might be going on, but before we could figure anything out he spotted us. As soon as he turned around to look our direction we froze, but when he started walking towards us we ran. At first we just darted ahead on the trail a little ways thinking he would turn around when he saw us leave, but he didn't. The scariest memory of my childhood is stopping to look back and seeing this stranger walking quickly towards us, bat still in hand, and knowing we were completely alone for miles in any direction. We both sprinted further down the trail panicking and unsure of what to do. We were actually running away from town, but there was no chance to turn back because the man was always still coming when we slowed down even a little. He followed us for at least a mile before we caught sight of the highway through the trees and made a break for it. We made it to the road and walked along it back to our town without seeing him again, but we were both scared out of our minds. When we got back we both explained what happened to my grandma thinking we should call the police but she completely brushed us off thinking we were just scaring ourselves over nothing. Now I'm an adult and I definitely would have called the cops if my kids told me this story. I never heard anything more about the guy and we definitely never went that far on the trail alone again. I'm still haunted by the sound of the kid crying we heard, not sure if it came from the grown man, or the crate. My town isn't as rural as it used to be so I'm not sure if I still count but years ago I used to be a driver's mate for a plant pot company. We traveled all over the UK but this happened about 3-4 to four miles outside of my hometown. All over the UK there are rumors that there are large prey cats still living in the wild. I'd always taken these as the fantasies of bored people. Then one day we had just left our warehouse, heading up the A20, between Charing and Lenham, on our way to the motorway to start heading to Wales and we saw a bloody great big black cat, we watched it for a good 15 minutes. It was walking past sheep, it was quite a bit larger than them. Then it stopped walking and sat down, it looked straight at us and then ran off, and it was gone. If I had been alone I would have chalked this up to my being tired or something but aid, the driver, saw exactly the same thing as me. 
That whole three day trip we both felt like we were being watched. Freaked us both out. It was a few months before we used the A20 again. I was camping by myself in a big open area in Colorado a few years back, Taylor Rees area if you're familiar. This area is all open grassy ranch land and I remember that I could see cows way off in the distance maybe two or three miles away. It was that kind of wide open space. That night was pretty quiet and as I was laying there in my tent drifting off, I thought I heard a slow footfall crunching in the gravel nearby. I waited quietly listening for a few minutes. About the time that I started to believe that it might have been a dream, I hear it again, but now was very slow, almost methodical, like a person trying to walk quietly one slow step at a time. This sound sounded close, like maybe it was no more than five or six feet from my tent. Not knowing what was going on or what to expect, I remember reaching out quietly and putting my hand on my pistol. I was starting to get a little freaked out. Maybe a minute later, I heard it again. This time it sounded like it might be right outside my tent, maybe only a foot or two away from my head. I laid there as quiet as I could possibly be with my heart racing just listening for any sound. Wondering if I'm going to have to defend myself or what. The silence seemed to go on forever. Then suddenly, without warning, I hear the most blood-curdling primal animal sound from right next to my head. It's hard to describe the panic of what raced through my mind in that instant, I instantly knew no human made that sound. Whatever it was was huge. It was like a combination of a dinosaur and a horn from a freight train. And it was like 10 inches from me with nothing between us but tent fabric. It felt like I jumped a foot in the air and sat bolt upright in my tent. I'm glad I didn't have a finger on the trigger or I probably would have squeezed off a round accidentally. In the eternity of the next few moments that passed after that sound, while I was sitting up and still processing the shock of what just happened, eyes as big as saucers as my adrenaline spiked, I heard a similar sound from way off in the distance. And then another from even farther away. My brain went on a quick wild ride like, F you. Get out. And so that's how I learned that cows in a big range like that still moo to each other, but I guess to be heard across such distances, they basically have to scream at each other. Summer 1997, I was 15 years old. My dad had recently remarried, sold his house, and moved in with his new wife who lived in rural eastern Idaho. I usually spent summers with my dad so I decided to move up to her house for the summer. I didn't really know anyone in the area except my stepmom's nephew, who was a year younger than me, so if I wasn't hanging out with him, I was playing N64, watching a movie, or jumping on the trampoline etc. She kept her trampoline in the front yard, I loved that thing. Spent hours on it perfecting my backflips and tricks and pretend WWE with my step cousin. I also spent a few cold-ass rural Idaho summer nights on that thing buried in my sleeping bag trying to tough out the cold. There were a few houses around us but most of the area was just farmland and trees. Directly across the street from her house was an irrigation canal, maybe 20 feet wide, fairly deep, and beyond that was a massive field with those giant hay bales in it, and about a half mile beyond the field was a large tree line. This was around late June, Friday afternoon. I'm the only one home, my dad managed a music store but he was also a musician and would often play gigs, which is where he was tonight. Stepmom was out with stepsister, probably in town. The sun is getting ready to set, I'm out on the trampoline just sitting, enjoying the cool air. I'm facing the field across the street when I see something come out from the tree line at the end of the field. It looked like a big ass wolf, holy shit. I jump off the tramp and walk to our property line to look at it better. Judging from my distance I would estimate its back to be about 4 feet tall, maybe more. It's just walking around when all of a sudden it looks towards me and just stops, it's staring at me now, the hairs on the back of my neck raise up, I've never felt anything like this. 
I know I should probably run into the house but I can't stop watching this wolf. All of a sudden, this thing stands up on its hind legs to get a better look at me. I about soil myself right there. I ran into the house and looked back out the window for it, but it was gone. I locked my doors and waited in fear for my stepmom to finally come home. The only person I immediately told was my older brother the next day, who wanted to go into the tree line to look for it. Nope. I never slept outside on the trampoline again. I spent most of the summer there and never saw the wolf again. Around 12 years ago, was working at a mine around 60 kilometers away from the town I lived in at the time. I had to make this 60 kilometers drive every day and because the location is very remote, there is literally nothing between my town and the next town over where the mine is located. Well, one morning the night shift crew I was on got let out of a shift early so I headed back home at around 2 a.m. in the morning. The weather was wild that night, it was windy as hell, and pissing with rain, so it was like whipping into my car super hard on the way home. The 60 km stretch of road between work and home is as I said, very remote, there's not a single man-made building or structure all the way except for some very large power line set back into the bush. The sides roads are thickly lined with dense green brush and trees that are heaving going to walk through, but around halfway back along that road there is around a 2 km stretch of road where the edges of the road are lined with quite short brush, sort of like plains, that go back around 100 meters before the vegetation becomes dense again. Well, it's around 2.30 am and I'm just hitting that stretch of road and as I said, it's dark, really dark and wild rain is pelting down getting blown around by the wind etc and I round a corner that takes me right into the middle of that stretch of plain and my headlights shine across it. And standing there around 80 meters back, almost right against where the brush gets thick and turns into trees again, there is a man standing there. Roughly 25 kilometers into the middle of nowhere, in the pitch dark and a wild storm. It looked like he was wearing dark trousers, some sort of coat or thick jacket and some sort of hat or cap. I looked right at the guy, he was too far away to see like eyes, but I could plainly see a man. He didn't move at all, and quickly faded out of view as my lights turn away from him. I had the wildest shot of adrenaline surge through me at that moment, I thought I was going to wreck my car. Like, WTF was he doing out there? Was he stuck? There were no vehicles anywhere on the sides of the road on the way and he was not near any side tracks. All I know is, I didn't stop or turn back. I sat right up at my steering wheel almost leaning over it and drove home the rest of the way rather quickly. I never told anyone but my wife because I thought they'd all reckon I was a kook or laugh about it. I'd always try to avoid driving through there late at night after that night and the only couple of times I did. I literally put my interior light on and didn't dare look out to the sides of the road. I can't explain to this day why that man was out there, or what he was doing but yeah, I don't ever drive through there at night at all anymore. My dad's backyard adjoins a giant gravel pit. When I was teenager, a few friends and I decided to walk over and explore it. It was supposed to be closed for the day, so it should have been a giant red flag when we saw a random old guy walking around and talking to himself. It's unlikely that he came from nearby, as the gravel pit is a good 10 minute drive from the city. Out of curiosity, we asked him how he was doing, and he told us that he was looking for gold. We don't have that anywhere near here. He talked to us about wolves getting too close to him and how he was trying to track the footprints. They were fox-sized at best, he walked off and started mumbling about how the Blue Jays were his favorite hockey team, and that's around when we noped out. We glanced back to make sure that he wasn't following us, and we saw him pull out a handgun and start polishing it. We sprinted towards an attached brush area to hide out because we didn't want to lead him to my dad's house. We called the police out of concern, but they couldn't find him. It was spooky at the time, but due to his thick accent, 
we are pretty sure that he might have just been a confused foreigner who was trying to live off the land. I still think about him from time to time and hope that he's okay. My parents live in Bayou country. House surrounded on three sides by wood slash small bayou. Lots of wildlife, very few people. When I was growing up almost no one lived there. One day, I'm home visiting with my husband and our toddler daughter, and we decided to go for a walk and my dad decides to join us. We left my mom at home with some other family who were visiting. Didn't bother to tell her we were going since we didn't plan on going far. About five minutes into our walk, I hear my mother's voice faintly calling my daughter's name. In the country, sound carries a lot further than you'd think, so I wasn't surprised I could hear her. My dad stopped walking and said better call your mom and tell her the baby is with us before she freaks out. So I borrowed his cell phone, I had left mine at home, and called her. The first few calls didn't go through so we started walking back. I'm starting to get nervous because my mom is probably freaking out thinking she lost my daughter or something. I finally reach her on the phone and tell her, breathlessly, that I had my little girl. She's confused. What are you talking about? I explain we went for a walk but heard her calling my daughter's name and didn't want her to worry. Dead silence. Then I've been inside. I never called her name. I never even looked for her. I assumed you had her. I know I heard my mom's voice. It was very clear, and so was my daughter's name. My dad heard it too. When I asked my husband, he said he had heard a voice calling our daughter's name but couldn't swear it was my mom. So weird, and not the only strange thing to happen back there but definitely the one of the creepiest. I was camping in upstate New York, middle of absolutely nowhere. There were six of us, three guys and three girls. Long after it got dark, and it gets really dark up there, great for stargazing, we were ready to pack it in and head to bed. Us girls decided to take the 10 to 15 minute walk to a small wash basin on the property to wash up slash brush teeth before bed. Meanwhile the boys stayed behind to poke at the fire. I held the large flashlight to guide our way there, swinging it a little as I walked. We did our business, all while laughing and having a good time. Then it was time to head back to the tents. About halfway is a large clearing, with more forest on either side. We come to the edge of the field, and cut straight through to the other side. About halfway through the field, I swung the flashlight upwards, and that's when we saw it. A group of people standing in a circle, all holding hands, in the pitch black darkness. They all looked like normal people in normal clothes, but they all just stared at us. It was almost as though they've been staring at us the entire time, I don't remember seeing their heads actually turning. They didn't say a word. I held the flashlight on them for a few seconds as I froze. Then the three of us started speed walking, as if to pretend this weren't actually happening. As soon as the group was behind us, we broke out into a sprint and ran the rest of the way back. Who the F were they? They weren't there on the way to the wash basin, why were they there on the way back? Where did they come from? Were they watching us? Why didn't they say anything? Not even a hi? Would that make them more terrifying or less? Are they a witch coven? A cult? We had so many questions and still no answers. Obviously the boys thought we were a little crazy, over-exaggerating, or even making it up. But we know what we saw. I'm still friends with the girl who brought us out there, and we find sanity with each other. We know we're not crazy. It's the closest thing to a ghost story I've ever experienced. Here in North Texas, a cryptid known as the Lake Worth Monster or the Greer Island Goatman is said to roam Greer Island and the surrounding area near Lake Worth. Although this story doesn't take place at the lake, it takes place by another close lake, I'm not going to share this specific lake for privacy reasons. Anyways when we were kids, my cousin, 
8 meters, lived by this lake my sister, 10 F, and I, 12 meters, as well as his other cousin, 13 meters, were invited over for the weekend. When we were over we heard strange noises during the night, similar to an elk bugle, this was the loudest when my uncle drove us through the woodland on the shore. One night when staying up playing Animal Crossing, about 2012, New Leaf had just released, we heard these noises and looked out the window to see a grey hairy humanoid figure with horns and hooves standing on his neighbor's roof. Needless to say, this was the most terrified I had ever been. After this we just hid in his room closed all windows and blinds then made a fort so we felt safer. We didn't get our aunt and uncle though because he had a baby brother that we did not want to disturb. After all, we thought the crying would attract it. I wouldn't say creepy but it was weird. When I was about 6 to 7 it was a clear still day on the farm and I was outside with my auntie. We could hear this noise that at first sounded like the wind was rushing towards us. The farm that I lived on is in a big valley surrounded by mountains and we were looking up towards the mountain and we can see the trees bending towards us and we can hear this screaming noise getting louder and louder. My auntie was getting freaked out because it was weird and I asked her what her what it was and she said maybe a windstorm? Out of nowhere this Air Force jet flies up over the mountain and then down right over the top of us and across the valley and over the other mountain. We threw ourselves on the ground because the noise was so loud and it was flying so low it scared the shit out of us. This happened in the early 90s. Air Force jets are no longer allowed to fly that low or at that speed over land. Although that was the only time I ever saw one do that on the farm so I kind of think that maybe they were being a bit dodgy to begin with. 